Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those who be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he is a marvelous saint. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing praise. And we will be singing. This the life mine, I'm going to shine. This the light of mine, I'm going to shine. This the light of mine, I'm going to shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for America and our leadership. Also for Israel and its leadership that we just follow through, Father God. Thank you this morning for letting us gather here today for our service. In Jesus' holy name we pray, Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, my. 
might be big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh, the mountains too high and the valleys too wide. Down on my knees I learn to stand, but I can't even walk. No, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Amen. 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 Now there's a, in the program, there is a call to worship. And so we're going to go through that. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And you should have that in your... For day and night court is put in his house. Yeah, for day and night court is put in his house. If he my God, then dwell in the tent of wickedness. For day and night court is put in his house. My brother, be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Thy feet coming then to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord, I will seek thy good. Those, Those who be planted in the house of the Lord, Lord shall flourish in the house of my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thine house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. The Lord, the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he is a marvelous thing. Make joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth sing praises. There will be, uh, this, I will read the scripture, and the scripture will be scripture Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe that I commanded you, so I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Lord, uh, the word, the word of God, for the people of God. Now to take a log. From all that will be with an equal gift of $50. Thank you, Sister Susan Kaufman. And um, if anyone would like to participate in the matching gift program, go to compassion.com slash gift catalog and make a donation um, send, and then send a copy of the receipt to Owen Chapel uh, at ame gmail.com. We do have this for you, Susan. Yes. Um, we are resuming our monthly movie nights here at Owen Chapel at uh, 423 Delaware. These events are co-sponsored with Otero County NAACP. This Saturday, at uh, October 17th at 5 p.m., we'll be showing the movie, The Great Debater, starring Denzel Washington 
and there's no charge. Popcorn and beverages are served. Uh, mask and social distancing will be observed. And this, if anybody wants to see this, I'll pass it around afterwards. Um, October 6th was the last day to register, but if anyone needs help with transportation to the polls or with filling out and submitting your mail in ballot, please contact Pastor Robinson. God's Children Exercise Program meets every Tuesday and Thursday morning from 8 to 9 at Holy Temple Full Gospel Church on 9th and Florida. This is a safe environment for gentle movement, stretching, walking, and, bench, and bending. Mask and social distancing are practiced. We are resuming our after-service fellowship meals today with soup and sandwiches provided by Sisters Carol and Susie Stroud. We will be social distancing and people are also encouraged to take food to go. And are there any other announcements? Okay. I talked uh, with the pastor. I'll be absent for Bible study. I'll stay on Wednesday evening and he consented to doing it in my stead. Uh, I just wanted to pass that on because I want to be here. I, I have a doctor's appointment. Okay. <clears throat> Next speaker that will come before you, and we call her the late president. Her name is Sister Darlene Bassett. Thank you, Brother Sean. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Today is Lay Witness Sunday. In 1969, the connection of the AME Church established Lay Witness Sunday. It was then called the Connectional Lay Witness Day. It was designated for observance throughout the AME Church on the second Sunday in October. It provides the lay, the non-clergy, the opportunity to witness their faith in Jesus Christ and their commitment to fulfilling his mission. George, could you just turn the sound down just a hair? I got a squeal in the mic here. Thank you. I'm the lay president and the IT person. This event was established, as I said, to carry out morning worship services at the respective local churches. Traditionally, Lay Witness Sunday recognizes the work and mission of the laity, which place within and outside the walls of the AME Church. Our theme today is, I'm a witness for the Lord. I'm gonna read from the book of Acts, chapter 1. Jesus was preparing his ascension. And his apostles were with him, and they kept asking him, Has the time come, Lord, for you to free Israel? He replied, verse 7, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. What does it mean to be a witness? A couple days ago, I was called into the Assistant District Attorney's Office in Alamogordo. They want me to be a witness in a criminal trial. A few months ago, I was at work driving my bus. I was stopped and a drunk driver slammed into the back of my bus. I filled out all the paperwork and turned it in. So why don't they call my supervisor? 
into court. Because in a court of law, a witness must have firsthand experience or knowledge. These laws about witnessing that we practice today go back to the Old Testament. Of course, back then, according to man's law, women couldn't be witnesses. Jesus changed that. When he witnessed, when he revealed himself as the Messiah to the woman at the well, she became a witness for the Lord. When he appeared to the first person, Mary Magdalene, after the resurrection, she became a witness for the Lord. That's the same principle. And there are many other stories in the Bible of women being witnesses. It's the same principle in the divine court of Jesus. Anyone can go to seminary school and get a degree, stand on a box, and preach the word. But to be a witness to Christ, one must know him, believe in him, have experienced him, have a relationship with him, and be filled with the Holy Spirit, and be transformed. Another person might be able to recite more scripture than you. Or they might pray with more unction and, and fire and performance than you. But they haven't walked in your shoes alongside of Jesus. This is what he meant by you will be my witness. It's your story with Jesus. And everyone who believes in Jesus and knows Jesus and has a story to tell about their own transformation is a witness to who he is. We're blessed here at Owen Chapel to have a pastor who doesn't just preach an empty word from the pulpit. Through his sermons, he's a witness to Christ. From his own life experiences, and also through the thousands of people that he's served in capacity as a pastor. He communicates to us what it means to be Christ-like. That's his walk with Jesus and his witness to Christ. So we thank you, Pastor Robinson, the shepherd of this house, for inviting the lay organization to share this pulpit to witness and to glorify God. Today we have two witnesses for Lay Witness Sunday. I'm going to introduce both of them, and there will be a selection in between the two speakers. Uh, Brother Gregory will lead us in another hymn in between the two. The first speaker is Brother Jerry Lott from the Gideons. Now, there are millions of stories, I'm sure, about the Gideons, but let's just look at the classic scenario. A person desolate, depressed, in a cheap, rundown motel room, leans over at those last moments and reaches into that drawer by the nightstand for the gun they put there. But instead, there it is, the Gideon Bible. And instead of picking up the gun, and ending their life, they pick up the Bible placed there by the Gideons and they begin a new life. So the missionary work of the Gideons produces witnesses for Christ. The second speaker we're gonna to hear today is Sister Susan Kaufman. She's been a member of Owen Chapel for a little over a year now. When Susan walks into the sanctuary, it lights up. Partly it's because of her hats. <laughs> But mainly it's because she brings with her a bright, warm, loving spirit. Since she joined our church family, she's contributed greatly through poetry reading, through her prayers, through her Bible study discussions, and being a keynote speaker during our Women in the Bible series. And she has a story to tell. She's a witness for Christ and how her life was affected and transformed by Jesus. And today she's going to share that testimony. So first, I'd like to invite Brother Lot. Let's hear about the Gideons. Thank you everyone for coming. He doesn't need the box, I'm sure. <laughs> Good 
my family will stone me. Uh, recently, a hotel manager in Abuja, Nigeria, uh, shared this testimony. A young, beautiful girl checked into his motel on the first day that the housekeepers went to go uh, service her room. No one answered. Same thing for the second day. When the hotel manager learned of this, he decided that on the third day, if she didn't answer, they were going to unlock a door and make sure that she was okay. The morning of the third day, the young lady went to see the manager and she said, I want to thank you. I came here from my home a while back. I am a Muslim. I'm unmarried and I'm pregnant. My family will stone me to death. She said, but for two days I found this book, the Holy Bible, and it says, placed by the Gideons. And I read it and I found that I could have eternal life through Christ Jesus. So I'm going to go home and I'm going to live up to the punishment that I'm going to receive. But I have the assurance that I will live in eternity with Christ Jesus. Sometimes we as Gideons have an opportunity to have a casual conversation with people. And in those conversations, we have an opportunity to share just who the Gideons are and what the Gideons do. And sometimes, even myself, I'll ask, do you know who the Gideons are? And we'll get this response back. Aren't you the men that put Bibles in the hotel? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not all that we do. Such in a case, uh, back in February of this year, I met a young lady at uh, the IHOP. I approached her and I asked her how she was doing. And of course, she was sitting there a little bit jittery. So I asked if I could sit down and talk to her. And she said, sure. So I sat down. I spoke with her for a little while and come to find out that she was an addict. Well, I had to simply ask the question, do you know who Christ is? Have you ever experienced Jesus Christ in your life? And she said, yes, I've been talked to about that. So I took out, of course, my little PWT, and I started to hand it to her. And she said, oh, she said, I have six of those already. <laughs> well. The seven. But anyway, I asked her, I said, well, did you use the helps in the front of the Testament? And were you able to understand that in the back of the Testament, which we call a G GPS? And she said, I did. I suppose she wasn't ready. There was nothing I could do other than just to let her have that PWT and to wish her the best that she could possibly get from Jesus Christ being part of her life. Now, whether she received Jesus Christ in her heart or not, I don't know. Sometimes we'll never see such as this come to fruition. But there is hope. There's always hope that as long as God's word is placed into someone's hands, there's an opportunity for them to be able to come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And here, once again, we have opportunity to join with your church, in placing these Bibles and also handed out these Testaments to millions of people. But without you, we would, not be, we would not be able to do that. We are born again Christian men, business and professional, with wives. And that is the purpose of the main purpose of what we have, have established as a ministry. As we go through, as we have opportunity, we work together as a church and as a ministry. As a ministry, we ask you to pray for us, and to pray that God opens doors that we may be able to get in and to distribute the scriptures that we have to give. Let me take you to Ecuador. 
Recently in Ecuador, the Gideons there were distributing Bibles to the fifth grade group of kids at that school. There was one young man that was always interrupting, disrupting as much as he possibly could. He caused uh, irritation for the Gideons. The Gideons did, with it, did what, what they could while they were there, and at the end of the day, they left. The next year they came back and they made a decision. Do we go if they didn't make a decision? They they asked themselves, do we need to go back to that same school? They brought up the young man and the disruptions that he made, and they prayed about it, and they said, Yes, we have to return. And they did, and this time there was that young disruptive disrupt, disruptive young man, and he came up to them this time, and rather than being disruptive, he said, thank you. He said, thank you. See, his father was an alcoholic. And when he came home from the bars, he would always create problems and, and uh, you know, attack his wife. Well, the kids, they would either hide or they would pretend that they were asleep. Well, one day he discovered the New Testament at the house. It made its way there. So he began to read it, and he began to attend church. And he and all of his family gave their lives to Christ. And the young man was so thankful, he said, I just had to thank you, Gideons, for the work that you do, because you saved our lives. So see, share God's word, and you save lives. That's always an opportunity to hear once again, without CME Church, the AME Church, we would not be able to do that. And most of the uh, Protestant evangelistic churches and the assemblies, we partner with them, and they are able to help us to be able to purchase. Now, we are not a Bible dis distribution, okay? We are a scripture distribution organization. We're just men of God. We have the same purpose that the church has. We want to win men, women, and children to the loss of Jesus Christ. When times arrive and there is no way out for people, and they're in a motel room, just as you said, there's an opportunity for them to reach in that drawer and to pull out the Bible. And to read it and to become saved for eternity's purpose and that's what the Gideons are that's what we do as a ministry that's what you do as a church you reach out to the lost each time I come here there's always an opportunity for me to express my can my uh, 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 appreciation to uh, Owens Chapel, and I have not changed at all. We appreciate it as Gideons. We really appreciate you all. Small as you may be, but your hearts are big. So we thank you. I thank you, Pastor Robinson, for this opportunity. I thank you, Darlene, for the opportunity to stand here for just a few minutes. And I understand that this organization, as this labor uh, services are uh, in, in, in action, I said, I promise, I'm going to give some time back. But here once again, please remember, without you, we are, just what we are in name, Gideons, and that's it. But when you help us through contributions, whether it be through uh, uh, a uh, donation, specifically for the Gideons, or whether you use the Gideon card files that we have back in your fellowship hall. Those cards, as I told you before, those are cards keep on giving. They don't ever stop. So I ask you to please use those when you have the opportunity. They are free, and we all like stuff that's free. So please use them as you see fit. Again, Pastor Robinson, we thank you. We appreciate Owens Chapel, always. Thank you.
thank Brother Lot <clears throat> for those very wonderful words of inspiration. And the next person, uh, Brother Gray Gray. Like you need a savior in times like these. You need.
Sister Darling, I need the box. <laughs> I am a witness for the Lord, and I want to tell you about miracles. There are those who say there are no more miracles. That's not true. Every baby that is born, that's a miracle. What I share with you today happened a long time ago. Just a few of the many miracles that God has put in my life. We were given a beautiful baby with a genetic disease, which should have been diagnosed in the first few months of his life. God protected him for over a year until his father got a job with a company with a medical coverage that would pay for his very expensive medicine that he would need for the rest of his life. We were stunned. <clears throat> why now? We all go through the why of bad things. We don't ask why when something good happens. So why do we ask why when bad things happen? Or something scary, or we are overwhelmed, or in way over our heads, as we were. We need to trust that God will bring us through it. After our time of asking, why, I turned to God and said to me, since you have given us this child to raise, you are going to have to teach us how to do this. As we are so in over our head. And God did. He gave us the ability, the strength, and the courage to do just that. It takes a lot of courage to raise a child that the world says is not normal and to teach the child to be courageous in his differences. In the course of time, we created a workable routine and moved on with life and bought a house. While we were looking for a house, we went to this particular house a second time. And we talked to the owner, an older gentleman who, was, who had emphysema, and he was going to have to leave his house and move into a nursing home so because he had no family that was willing to take care of him. And we wanted to ask him a few more questions about the house. And out of the blue, he asked us, 
if you buy this house, would you want the furniture too? And we said, yes, kind of hesitantly. And we said, we would be interested, but we need to know what he wanted for the furniture. And this was a two bedroom house with a, a dining room, living room, eating kitchen, den and formal living. So that's a lot of furniture. And he said he'd sell it to us for a hundred dollars if we bought the house. To me that was a miracle. He did buy the house and